This is the Nile River, and the survival of half a billion people depends on this river. However, the world's second longest river is currently under threat from climate change, pollution, and human exploitation. Its flow rate has decreased from 3,000 cubic meters per second to 2,830 cubic meters per second over the last 50 years. So what is causing the river to dry up? Is this a signal of impending doom, or people are just being overly cautious? Let's find it out. Nile River The Nile River, which is the longest river in the world, is called the Father of African Rivers. It starts south of the equator and flows north through northeastern Africa to the Mediterranean Sea. It runs for about 4,132 miles and drains an area of about 1,293,000 square kilometers. Parts of Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Sudan, and the part of Egypt that is farmed are in its basin. The Kagera River in Burundi is the farthest place from which it flows. The Nile is made up of three main rivers, the Blue Nile and the Atbara, which flow from the highlands of Ethiopia, and the White Nile, whose headwaters flow into lakes Victoria and Albert. The name Nile comes from the Greek word Nihilus, which was translated into Latin as Nihilus. Nalos is thought to have come from the Semitic root Nal, which means a valley or river valley and by extension a river. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks didn't understand why the Nile, unlike other big rivers they knew, flowed from south to north and flooded during the hottest time of the year. The ancient Egyptians called the river Ar, or Or, black, because the sediments that the river carries when it floods are black. Since the mud in the Nile is so dark, the earliest name for the land was Kem or Kemi, which also means black and means darkness. The Nile River Basin, which is about a tenth of the size of the continent, was where some of the world's most advanced civilizations grew and fell apart in the past. People who lived on the banks of the river were among the first to learn how to farm and use a plow. The basin is bounded on the north by the Mediterranean, on the east by the Red Sea Hills and the Ethiopian Plateau, on the south by the East African Highlands, which include Lake Victoria, a source of the Nile, and on the west by the less well-defined watershed between the Nile, Chad, and Congo basins. The water from the Nile is always there, and the high temperatures in the area make it possible to grow a lot of crops along its banks. Even in places where the average rainfall is enough for farming, there are often big changes from year to year that make farming without irrigation risky. Africa's Water Resources All of Africa's biggest water problems, like the shrinking of Lake Victoria and the disappearance of Lake Chad, are part of a bigger problem with the water security of African nations. It may surprise you to learn that Egypt has the most water security in Africa. Egypt is 90% desert, and 90% of its people have to live within 50 kilometers of the Great Nile River, which has been their source of life and income for thousands of years. This is because people have been planning how they use water for thousands of years to make sure the population stays alive. A country's water capacity is measured by how much water each person gets each year. From this point of view, the Republic of Congo has the most water of any country in Africa. Congo gives each person more than 31,000 cubic meters, but because so few Congolese can get clean water, it is one of the least water-secure countries in Africa. Central African Republic, which is close by, has the most water per person in Africa, but only 37% of Central Africans have access to clean water. GDP is similar to the per capita water capacity measure of a person's actual water security. Even if a country has a high GDP, most of its wealth may be held by a small group of wealthy people, while most people in the country are poor. Egyptians are the water elite of Africa because 99% of them are hooked up to a water supply. All other African countries make sure they have enough water by planning for it. Water security in Africa is about more than just making sure people have enough water to drink and grow crops. Water security means political security because governments don't have to deal with a crisis that could kill people like a lack of water. Security of water means the security of health since water is a key part of keeping clean. The idea of water security also includes the environment and the need to protect watersheds and wetlands, which are important for all life. Lastly, economies fall apart if businesses and industries can't get the water they need to run. 
Africa is in a water crisis, and this includes places that people thought had enough water. This can be measured by the UN standard for water security, which is 1,000 cubic meters of water per person per year. Using this standard as a guide, it is the job of a country's government to manage its water resources by building purification and delivery systems for all of its citizens to make sure that everyone has access to clean water. By UN standards, even countries like Egypt that have plenty of water are in a very dangerous situation. Egypt gets 550 cubic meters of water per person per year, which is half of the UN minimum. This puts Africa's most water-secure country in the category of having a scarcity of water, according to statistics. If the share per person falls below 500 cubic meters, the country will be in the category of absolute scarcity. The biggest African countries don't meet the definition of water security, which is that each person has access to 1,000 cubic meters of water per year. Some countries don't have enough water because of their geography. For example, the volcanic island of Cabo Verde has always had trouble getting enough water. Today, each person only gets 49 cubic meters of water per year. Algeria and Libya, which are both deserts, have 271 and 193 cubic meters respectively. Only 13 of Africa's 54 countries have some level of water security in the 21st century, and this is only a mid-level level of security, not a high level. Nile is now a river of worry. The Nile, which is a major source of drinking water and water for farming for millions of people and an important transportation route, is getting smaller. Climate change is the reason why the river is getting smaller. Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan can't stop global warming on their own, and they all worry about what it will do to the Nile. The river, which is 6,500 kilometers long, is drying up. Since the 1970s, the flow of the Nile has dropped from 3,000 cubic meters per second to 2,830 cubic meters per second. Egypt has had a policy for a long time that no one else can mess with the Nile water it gets, so Egypt is worried that Ethiopia's big dam might be able to do just that. There are already fights going on all over the world over water. The African Union is worried that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam could lead to conflict because Ethiopia is using the Nile on its own to fill a huge lake. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam Just like Egypt doesn't want any other country to decide how much water it gets from the Nile, Ethiopia has been very firm about not letting other governments or international groups manage GERD. Ethiopia needs GERD to make electricity so it can connect large areas that aren't currently connected to the national grid and grow its economy. But while Ethiopia doesn't have any immediate water problems, Egypt is trying to increase agricultural production to feed its huge population by expanding agricultural land through irrigation. In the past seven years, this type of land has grown by 9%. And Egypt is worried that outside interference with its water supply could stop this from happening. Ethiopia meets the requirement of 1,000 cubic meters of water per person per year. Like Egypt, Sudan is worried about the effect of GERD on the Nile because its figure, 629 cubic meters, is the same as Egypt's. Egypt's first argument against GERD was that the Nile's flow would be stopped while the GERD reservoir filled, which would ruin Egyptian agriculture and make it hard to make electricity. Ethiopia has been filling the lake behind the dam in stages to keep things as smooth as possible. In February 2022, 11 years after the $5 billion dam was started to be built, it started making electricity. Ethiopia plans to keep filling the reservoir, show the rest of the world that the project is done, and end any further talks. But Egypt won't be happy without a treaty to protect its water rights, so the focus of the talks has changed. The new focus is on how climate change affects the Nile. Egypt is reportedly trying to make deals that would be enforced by international groups like the African Union and would require Ethiopia to let water out of the dam when Egypt or Sudan officially say they are in a drought. People who want such an agreement point to the fact that global warming has been shown to affect the flow of the Nile, cause temperatures to rise, and cause more droughts. Because the Nile River countries can't do anything about climate change, they have to deal with the effects of global warming on the river's water capacity. Egypt is already doing this, and the country's efforts to reduce the effects of climate change are a sign of the initiatives and policies that are to come. In a strange way, these changes, along with some surprising discoveries about how GERD works, 
hurt Egypt's environmental arguments against the dam. Because of climate change, temperatures will keep going up. This means that more water will be lost through evaporation than before. Today, evaporation causes Lake Nasser behind the Aswan Dam to lose 12% of its volume every year. This means that 16 billion cubic meters of water go up into the air every year. This is because the dam was built in a hot desert, which seemed like a problem back when it was being built in the 1960s. But GERD is built in the cool highlands of Ethiopia, not in the desert. When the dam is done, 1.7 billion cubic meters of water will evaporate every year because of the heat. Based on this, hydrologists think that GERD, with its ability to save water, can actually increase Egypt's and Sudan's water supplies by up to 5%. The amount of electricity the Aswan Dam can make is likely to go down, but only 12% of Egypt's electricity comes from hydropower and cutting Aswan's output by an estimated 25% would only cut Egypt's electricity capacity by 3%. Already, farmers around Suez are using solar power to run their businesses because a drought that has nothing to do with GERD has cut down on hydrogenation. People are saying that their project could be a model for using more solar power in Egypt and probably in other places in the region where climate change is affecting hydropower generation. In another way, GERD will help countries further down the river save water. The huge dam keeps the mud from the Nile River. With less silt buildup, the Aswan Dam in Egypt and the Miro, Rosaire and Senar dams on the Nile in Sudan will last longer. Africa's Water Security Challenge The fact that the Nile River's flow has been decreasing is just one more sign of how climate change is affecting the water supply of a continent that has never had enough water for its people. If water management, the only known solution, isn't put into place through policy and action, disaster is sure to strike. For the Nile, this means that Egypt and Sudan must agree that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam saves water and that Ethiopia must agree to a deal to make sure that the saved water is available. Another important way to save energy is to use solar power instead of hydroelectricity when drought lowers the water level in dams. Lastly, the process of treating wastewater needs to go much faster because only 20% of Egypt's wastewater is cleaned up. So that was all about the video. Hope you find it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon for more updates like this.